Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on the Fast Bundle of Plugins from Focusrite. Now, the first question that comes to mind, and you wouldn't be wrong for thinking or asking this, is why is Fast good? Am I in a rush? Maybe I want to take my time. Well, it's a well-known, kind of time-tested, proven reality that when we're mixing, we make our best choices early in the process. There's a point of diminishing returns. The first few minutes are when we get the maximum results. And then when we get bogged down making minor tweaks, that's where we can kind of lose the forest for the trees, as the saying goes. So what you do in the first couple of minutes really is going to get you probably 80% or more of the way to the sound that you're looking for. So working fast is good and productive. And you might get 80% of your sound in the first few minutes and then spend an hour getting that last 20%, and that's fine. But what these fast plugins are all about is keeping you in that creative zone and letting you to get good, usable results quickly and then letting you move on so you can really get your mix together quickly. But what's also great about these is they offer a detailed view where you can break down what's going on with these macro type controls and then get into the nitty gritty and start making the minor tweaks that you're inevitably going to need and want to make down the road. But you can get your sound up and running quickly and make paint the broad strokes efficiently and quickly. And that's what these plugins are all about. Now, we're going to start with the equalizer. When you open it up, you get into this fast view versus the detailed view, which gives you more information. And in this video, I want to just look at the fast view. Now, I've got a raw mix here with no processing, and we're going to use it throughout the videos to build up a little mix using these plugins. And I'm going to make all these files available to you to download. And the first step, I'm going to use this on a drum bus right now, is to choose one of these profiles. And I'm going to choose drums. And then we have it play some of the audio, press the learn button. It listens and uses its AI to come up with a good starting curve. So let me just play you where I'm at now with this raw drum bus with drums that sound okay, but they're obviously completely not processed. I'm going to hit the learn button. All right, so it's presenting me with a filter curve based on the algorithm that's programmed in here and what it's listened to from my track. Now, the first broad stroke adjustment we can make is using the intensity slider, which scales the corrective curve. And then we have three flavor buttons to quickly change the character of the sound. And neutral is obviously pretty neutral, but we have warm and bright. And the idea is that once you settle on a flavor, you can further fine tune the sound using these flavor sliders in fast view, or you can, of course, go into detailed and work there. And it gives you an interesting and useful description of what kind of qualities of the sound is going to be affected in each of these ranges. So let me dial it up, go to warm, and then I can use these flavor sliders. Now, for example, I like a bit more of a cut in this range. And we can use this headphone icon to solo the band to hear what's going on exactly there. And we can also toggle that by holding the command key down. It toggles the solo mode. And that's control on Windows. Not much happening up there. And we also have a setting here, if we want, where we can optionally solo on touch, meaning that when we just touch the flavor knob or flavor slider, it's going to solo it. I personally don't like that. I'd rather hold down the modifier and do it. Now, I've manually modified this flavor, and you see the asterisk next to it. And if I want to reset it, as soon as you hover your mouse over it, you'll see that reset button. And you can always backtrack if you don't like what you've done. Now, any changes you make here are going to be reflected in the detailed view. And here, we see a more, 
obviously detailed version of what's going on. And I want to look at this in a separate video. But what I do want to point out here is that if you've changed a filter connected to a flavor slider in the detailed view here, you can no longer control that slider in fast view. Like for example, let's say I want to alter this knock value. So here, let's say I move it and change it like that. Now I go back to fast view. You'll see that it's no longer able to be adjusted. However, you can always hover there and go reset and it'll bring you back. Next video, let's look under the hood at detailed view.